Dear students, in one of the previous classes, we had discussed what is osmoregulation and we also discussed the general mechanisms which the aquatic organisms follow to uh, attain uh, osmoregulation. So, in this class, we will study the osmoregulation in terrestrial animals. So, what is the peculiarity of a terrestrial environment? It has got higher atmospheric temperature and a low atmospheric water content. So, the terrestrial uh, animals, they will have uh, what risks will they face. So, since the atmosphere, atmospheric temperature is high and the humidity is uh, low, atmospheric water content is low compared to an aquatic environment, the terrestrial animals, they will have a tendency to lose water through evaporation. So, here osmotic loss is negligible. Osmotic loss of water is negligible because they are not living in an aquatic environment, but what they face is evaporative threat. Uh, and here another peculiarity is they are losing water without a simultaneous gain of salts by diffusion. Here there is no diffusion, there is, evap there is a chance of evaporative loss of water. Then if the water loss is equally compensated by water gain, the animal is having a perfect water balance. That means if water loss is equal to water gain, th there is perfect water balance. But on the other hand, if the water loss is not equally compensated by water gain, we can say the animal is in a negative water balance. Now, what does it mean? That is, water loss is high, but it is not compensated by water gain. Water loss is higher than water gain, then it is called negative water balance. If it is, uh, if there is no balance. So, this is a dangerous situation and it will push the animal to the risk of dehydration or desiccation. So, this danger, how can they avoid this danger? For this, they are having certain specializations to conserve water and thereby reduce water loss. So, we will go to some of their osmoregulatory adaptations. So, we are discussing about the osmoregulatory adaptations in terrestrial organisms. So, first one. First one is the presence of a uh, body surface which is highly impermeable and waterproof. So, this will prevent evaporation. How is this accomplished? Uh, in some organisms or in some plants, you can say there will be a coating of wax over the surface. On leaves, there will be a wax coating. In animals, there will be keratin or uh, there are in certain organisms, there will be a covering of cuticle, scales, feathers, fur, etc. So, all these uh, specializations all these uh, cutaneous specializations help in preventing evaporative water loss like feathers in birds, fur in mammals, the cuticular covering in uh, certain organisms, you take the case of certain insects, the coating of wax on the surface of leaves, then keratin over uh, the body surface of uh, certain body parts, there will be keratinized covering example the nails the uh, hair etc is having a coating of keratin. So, that is one of the adaptations, the presence of an impermeable waterproof body surface. Then second is internal respiratory surfaces to avoid water loss. We will take the respiratory surfaces of certain organisms. You take the case of an earthworm, skin is its respiratory organ, it is covering the body. So, there is chance, so the respiratory surface is actually exposed to the environment. So, there is chance of evaporative water loss. Whereas, you take the case of organisms who have lung for respiration. Our lungs are so internally placed that the water loss through evaporation is less. You take the case of insects where they have got trachea. The tracheal system is their respiratory or the entire tracheal system serves respiration in them and it opens out through the spiracles. The spiracles are so minute and these spiracles lead to the tracheal system which is protected inside the body. So, the respiratory organs are internal so that evaporative water loss from them can be prevented. Yes, whenever we do expiration, there is some amount of moisture lost from the body but still that is lesser compared to those organisms in which the respiratory surfaces are outside. But for us, the respiratory surfaces are inside. For example, our lungs, the tracheal system in the insects, etc. are examples. Then third one, in the digestive system, there are two regions called as the colon and the rectum. In these two places, there will be reabsorption of water. So, if 
the process did not happen we would have lost much water through the feces but that doesn't happen because in colon and rectum reabsorption of water takes place so that is the third one then fourth one is in the kidney there are various regions that is the kidney is made up of a number of tubules called as the nephrons and in the nephron there are certain specialized parts where occurs the reabsorption of water uh, etc so that the urine produced is highly concentrated or hypertonic urine is passed for example in our case itself uh, our urine is four times concentrated when compared to our body fluid when compared to the uh, filtrate formed inside the kidney the first urine formed uh, is called as glomerular filtrate the first urine formed in our kidney is called glomerular filtrate but it is not glomerular filtrate which is eliminated from the body but urine is eliminated so compared to the glomerular filtrate the urine is four times concentrated because water is being absorbed from it water is so much absorbed that it gets four times concentrated in the case of uh, desert organisms like kangaroo rats the urine is around 12 to 13 times concentrated compared to the filtrate so uh, production of concentrated or hypertonic urine is one of the adaptations then next is uh, the terrestrial organisms either eliminate uric acid or urea uric acid demands least expenditure of water this helps in conserving water urea also demands lesser water when compared to ammonia uh, terrestrial organisms mostly uh, are uh, ureotelic or uricotelic which will help in water conservation they will never be ammonotelic and uh, there are certain organisms which have the ability to conserve water within the body and certain desert organisms are examples some animals have the ability to sustain on metabolic water kangaroo rat is an example because you take humans in humans we are losing water through urination sweating etc and there is some evaporative loss of water through our expired air when we do expiration there is some evaporative loss of water so we are losing water through sweating if uh, through respiration some amount through respiration and also by urination so how do we compensate for the water loss there are uh, three ways first is by drinking water next is through the food we eat we are getting water and by metabolism by metabolism some amount of water will be produced but out of the entire water loss around uh, 60% is compensated through drinking water so when we lose water we are compensating or we are making for it uh, 60 percentage of this compensation is by drinking water so we have we are uh, required to drink water around 30 percentage is compensated through the food we eat there will be some water content in the food and 30 percentage of the water loss is compensated through the water which is derived from our food only 10% compensation is done through metabolic water by metabolism water is produced so our body cannot fully depend upon metabolic water we have to drink water plenty whereas in a desert animal which is known as kangaroo rat there is no water available for drinking so how does it compensate for the water loss it is losing some amount of water through urine but it doesn't sweat Uh, and there is some evaporative loss of water so how does it compensate for this water loss it cannot compensate the water loss by drinking because there is no water available to drink but it eats uh, through its food it is getting uh, some water uh, through its food it is getting uh, around uh, 10% of the water loss or 10 to 30% of the water loss can be compensated through the food it eats but the rest the bulk of water loss uh, compensation is through metabolic water most of the food it eats will contain fats and by the metabolism of fats there will be water produced and this is how it compensates for its water loss not by drinking water so in different organisms the how they compensate the water loss from the body is by different mechanisms when we uh, the humans when we compensate the water loss by drinking um, the kangaroo rats they will compensate for the water loss through metabolism by the oxidation of food stuffs 
the hibernating mammals are also example for this. Then the next adaptation is many have tolerance to dehydration uh, like camels even if uh, they lose water and even if the concentration of the blood increases when our body loses water the osmolarity of the blood is increasing the solute concentration of the blood is increasing when we lose water but it is being tolerated by many organisms we are all homeothermic organisms that means our body temperature will remain the same whatever be the temperature changes in the surrounding uh, so we have a mechanism of regulation of temperature to reduce evaporation and the loss of water and salts because uh, the sweating is actually controlled by the hypothalamus so uh, sweating is much connected to the water content in our body it is much connected to the uh, osmolarity of our blood so uh, it is actually a mechanism to get rid of excess heat so it is all controlled by the hypothalamus and uh, this is part of the temperature regulatory mechanism and by which uh, the water loss through evaporation and the loss of water and salts is also uh, reduced so sweating occurs only when it is hot outside only when the body requires a cooling up then only sweat production will be there otherwise there will be no production of sweat if sweat is continuously produced we will be losing water and salts that doesn't take place so sweat is produced only during temperature regulation so the regulation of temperature in uh, homeotherms or warm blooded organisms to reduce evaporation and the loss of water and salts then there is hormonal regulation of water loss nervous regulation of water loss that we will see uh, in forthcoming sessions so there are hormones in our body like aldosterone vasopressin etc which will uh, compensate for the water loss and there is nervous regulation example by the hypothalamus so the osmoregulation in terrestrial mammals is closely related to the regulation of body temperature as i already told you in them the temperature regulation is mainly through sweating panting etc panting is seen in dogs which involves loss of water and salts so when there is sweating or panting panting means the behavior which is shown by dogs and this will uh, result in uh, so when there is sweating or panting there will be result there will be decrease in the blood volume by loss of water and salts when water is lost the volume of the blood will decrease when the volume of the blood decreases beyond a permissible limit there will be heat stroke so when there is excessive sweating and panting there will be loss of water and salt this results in decrease in blood volume when there is fall in blood volume beyond a permissible limit there will be heat stroke so at this critical stage the autonomous nervous system which is a part of our nervous system and the regulatory centers in the brain they get activated and what they do they will induce thirst in us so when thirst is induced the animal will take in water so this will restore the water balance so it's like a, a circuit or a feedback that means when water is lost through excessive sweating or blood volume will decrease the blood plasma volume will decrease uh, which will result in a heat stroke which will uh, make the autonomous nervous system and the regulatory centers in the brain to get activated and they will induce thirst and the animal drinks water and the water loss is compensated so this will restore the water balance but the intake of too much of water will lead to increased urine production and excessive urine output is called as diuresis so when we urinate more along with the loss of water we are also losing salts so this will alter the salt concentration of the blood no so to avoid uh, such an eventuality and there is there are certain uh, hormones coming into action like vasopressin which is also called as the anti diuretic hormone uh, which is released by the which is produced from the hypothalamus and released by the posterior pituitary 
so there is hormonal uh, regulation occurring which will restore the water and salt balance in the body the details of which will be dealt with in later sessions so this is what is all about the hormonal and nervous regulation so these are the osmoregulatory adaptations uh, in terrestrial organisms when we just bring it into a nutshell that is the impermeable body surface internal respiratory surfaces reabsorption of water in uh, digestive and uh, the urinary tract then uh, the uricotelic and ureotelic excretion water conservation dependence on metabolic water tolerance to dehydration temperature regulation and hormonal and nervous regulation thank you